The Scotsman's a really neat little machine. You can get it, get it in 12 volt or 110. It's got a small motor on it. Runs a small carbide cutter here. That's going to cut the groove in the key. We've got a collet closer or a vice assembly that clamps the key right here. On the end of the machine, we've got a knob that sets our codes for the depth on the key that we're going to cut. We turn it. If we want a number one cut, we turn it there. If we want a number three cut, we turn it there. There's also on the end of the machine, there's another shaft. If we were going to duplicate a key, it would slide on here, and there's an actual groove to fit in that little tab on the inside of the key. There's eight indexes on here, one for the tab, and if you turn it, it locks into that indent each time you turn it, and it would come up against the little stop tab. You can see the groove in the key coming up against the stop tab. That's going to tell the key on the other end what depth to cut it. So we're not going to do that right now because we're not duplicating a key. We're cutting a key from code. So we're going to have to lock a key in here. And we're going to have to slide it in the groove in the collet. We're going to have to push the key up against our cutting tool so we know it's got a zero setting. Tighten our collet down. And what I like to do is turn the cutter a little bit and make sure that I've, the key is all the way as far forward as it needs to be, but not too far. And by turning this tool, I can actually feel it brushing the end of the key so I know I'm not in far enough. If it was in too far, I wouldn't be able to turn the cutter with my finger. These keys are real critical on the uh, depths, so you've got to make sure everything's locked down tight. And the first cut on this key is going to be a number one. We're going to set our little knob on the end here to a number one. Put a key on the end so we can rotate our shaft. Turn our machine on. That's our number one cut. We're going to go to a number five. We're going to cut two fives. We're going to cut another five. We're going to cut a four. And then we're going to cut two threes. Remember, we're rotating this key each time. And the last cut's going to be a number one. Set our gauge to a number one. And there you have it. So we take that key out, turn it around here so I can get a good grip on it. We've got our key out of our machine now and you can see all of our cuts in here. That mill takes a half moon cut or just a half round cut in here. It's real critical on the depth of this. You need to have enough ledge in here for the pin to set down on this ledge so that you get a good reading when you put the key in. Uh, these particular keys are real easy to cut if the machine's set up properly. It's just uh, a matter of running in, but you got to pay attention to that cut in there. We're going to go and see if this key will actually work in the uh, lock that we've been playing with here. Hopefully it'll work. We're going to get our lock up here, put the key in. Whoa! Boy, once again we've uh, hit the odds and uh, the key works, but that's if everything's set right, you know your key's going to work. You read your codes properly, pay attention. If you don't, go back to and review. If you need to take one of these locks apart and read it, we've got a neat little tool here. It's a cutter. What this neat little tool does is it cuts the outer shell away from the lock, 
and it allows you to dump the pins out without destroying the uh, pins so that you can actually read the pins, you could code cut them, you could make a key. Why you would do this if you had a bunch of vending machines that all had the same lock on them, or you can just use this tool to cut the lock open and get the pins out, and then you could turn the lock and open the lock. What it's going to go is going to go in and actually cut that outer face away with a, you had a power drill on it, it'd be a little easier than my fingers, but you cut that outer face away, drop your pins out. Once the pins were out, you could rotate the lock, open it, or you could take the pins out real carefully and read each pin, and you could code cut a key from it. That's just another one of these things that makes it fun to be in a locksmith.